body bags were whore lies. Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to week 109 here on Body Bags. I am your host, Mood616, and thank you once again for stopping in, guys. Alrighty, yeah, week 109 is here, and I got another random review for you guys. Uh, this one's coming courtesy of Dire Straight Films. Now, if you've heard of this, this company before, uh, they put out films like Isle of the Damned, uh, The Seventh Day, Mutantis. Um, I've seen Mutantis. I enjoyed it. I We reviewed it on the podcast. My podcast mates, my co-hosts, they did not care for it at all. Uh, I also reviewed The Seventh Day on my podcast too, which is a really fun, awesome flick. I really enjoyed that. Still need to see Isle of the Damned. I believe this is the very first one that they put out, and I really do kind of like the premise of this film. And it is from 2005, and it's called Pleasures of the Damned. So, yeah. If you know anything about Direwood films, basically you kind of know what you're getting yourself into with this one. You know, very kind of wacky type characters, really weird dubbing, you know, they, they're just kind of goofy, almost spoof type films, but, but yeah, with that said, get into the plot of this one, it basically is about the, a satanic um, biker gang that gets word, they hear about this legend that there's a book somewhere out in this weird ancient forest that will, you know, kind of grant them eternal, eternal life, so they want to go out to this forest and find this book so they can get eternal life and stuff like that. Uh, meanwhile, you kind of have a subplot going on where this girl, Evelyn, she's hired a private investigator to help, um, you know, retrieve her brother from the satanic biker gang. Uh, he's been all wrapped up with the biker gang and she doesn't believe that he belongs there and she wants to save him before, you know, he gets too deep into the, what's, you know, what they're trying to do. Um, ultimately, all these type characters, Evelyn, the private investigator, the whole biker gang, they end up out at this um, ancient forest. Somehow the biker gang kind of resurrects the remains of, you know, these zombified 200-year-old uh, um, member or cult members that had sacrificed themselves to Satan. Uh, they somehow come to life as zombies and they start attacking the bikers and everyone else around them. And yeah, just basically all hell, all hell kind of breaks loose out in this uh, out in this forest. So that's basically the uh, you know the plot of the film right there. Now my thoughts on this one. Now this one right here is it's actually quite interesting. I really do like the premise of the film. It's actually it's pretty fun. There's a lot more to the story. I like the whole mythology and the backstory that they give to you know this book and and things like that. It's actually quite well written. I actually kind of enjoyed it. But the thing I like about this movie, it's very very kind of well done. Um, in certain levels. I like the aspect that they're spoofing, you know, 70s giallo films and there's, you know, 70s satanic, uh, you know, biker type films and, you know, exploitation, even action films, kung fu films. They, they really just kind of spoof everything in there. Um, I, I really like the look of the film too. It has that old 70s grindhouse look. It has, you know, you know, all the lines. It just looks like old shitty film stock and stuff. I really do like that. But you know what you're getting yourself into with this one? You know, I get past the, uh, you know, the shitty wigs and the fake mustaches and, you know, the really bad acting and stuff. But the one thing about the, the Direwood films, like with Mutantis and stuff, is, is the really bad overdubbing. I'm not really too sure on why they, why they would do that for this film. I mean, I understand that they're kind of spoofing and stuff, but they purposely, you know, try to unmatch the voices. Like, the, the private investigator is obviously voiced by a black guy, and he's a white guy in the film. Uh, it just kind of throws you off a little bit. Um, but I really did like the story and, and the kind of look of the, the film and stuff. And I think some of the best scenes in this film are scenes of action and, you know, um, just when they're kind of roaming around and when there's really no dialogue. I think those are some of the best scenes in the film, to be honest. It actually is um, edited quite well. I actually did like the editing in the film. It's edited very much like a 70s film. It has a lot of close-up shots. It has like this psycho vision where, you know, it kind of goes all red and x-ray vision and stuff uh, in certain parts when, you know, something bad's about to happen and stuff. So they're really kind of mimicking the 70s quite well. And especially with the soundtrack, it's very exploitive sounding and you know it's just the music cues are awesome this film music's fantastic actually some of the best one of the best things about the film really is the music um one one aspect of the film that actually did surprise me was the gore there actually was a fair amount of gore blood and gore when these zombies started attacking everybody which kind of surprised me i was very kind of taken back but i wasn't really expecting a whole lot from that um, but when it happens, I'm just like, oh, yeah, okay, that's not too bad. Um, so you got a little bit of that. You got, of course, your sleaziness. You know, there's, you know, hints at, uh, 
um, you know, male on male rape, you know, head roll rape, and like just things like a lot of sleazy moments. Um, some, you know, just just nasty sleazy shit that's going on in the film too. So very reminiscent of the seventies. Um, you know, not really a whole lot more to say about the film, but it's definitely kind of fun if you can get past the really shitty. Uh, d dubbing in it and stuff. I just I find it kind of irritating to watch, and I really wish they had just done it straight up, you know, and with you know the way they the way they shot it and stuff. I think it would have worked a lot better. Um, but it did surprise me. It's a really quick watch. This one only runs about seventy five minutes, so it's over and done with pretty fast. Um, but you know, the story and the look of it and the sound of it was just enough to keep me intrigued throughout the whole film. Um, the wife came down while I was watching and she's like, why is it dubbed like that? I'm like, oh, it's, they're kind of spoofing. She's like, oh, that makes sense because it's fucking terrible. So we had a good laugh about that. But uh, but yeah, um, not bad. I actually do really like what they did with this. They created like this whole kind of fake um, uh, kind of st backstory for the director. Uh, apparently the director of this film, his name is like Antonio... Uh, Giallo, and they create like this whole kind of fake story with it and stuff like that. And it's even, it kind of gives you a little bit of that in the intro and stuff. I, I really like that. You know, the European cuts, you know, it's, and it's very, it's very reminiscent of Italian films too, which is really funny. Hence the Giallo part and stuff. So this one is a lot of fun. Um, I know you can pick this one up for super cheap. I actually got this from the Direwood table at Wasteland for free. They actually gave this to me. Um, no, I can't remember if they gave me this one. I don't know. I think I got this one for free anyways, but. Anyways, guys, that is going to do it for this one. If I had to rate this film, I would probably just give it about a 6, six out of 10. You know, it's nothing great, but it is entertaining. You know, if you can handle these type of films, I do recommend it. So, Pleasures of the Damned from Direwood Films. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Yeah, sleaziness at its best, really. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for week 109 here on Body Bags. Check you next week. Peace out, homies.